The scripture you're reading today is from Job 17, 1 through 2, 7 through 9, and John 3, 16 through 21. The spirit is broken, my days are extinct. The grave is ready for me. Surely there are mockers around me, and my eye dwells on their provocation. My eye has grown dim from grief, and all my members are like a shadow. The upright are appalled at this, and the innocent stir themselves up against the godless. Yet the righteous hold to their way, and they that have clean hands grow stronger and stronger. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have ever eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. I cannot express how thankful I am that you have, have invited me to worship with you today. You might be surprised, but I have not preached a sermon for at least a year, maybe a year and a half. So it feels a little different to be back in the pulpit and doing a sermon. It's very unusual for me to feel that way, but when 18 months have gone by, I can relate a little bit, even with the passage of Job that was just read to you. My eyes have grown deaf with grief. My whole frame is but a shadow because my past 18 months have not been that easy. I imagine that most of us from time to time have had our down days or weeks or even longer. Perhaps some of you can relate to Job also. So many bad things happened to him. Job was wealthy, but he lost it all, including his family. He was down and destitute. His prayers, however, suggest that he wanted to live in the light. I'm quite certain that you are here because you wanted to worship and that you've asked the question as you came into this church, how are you doing? And you grand, you made people feel good and you shook their hands and you did all kinds of nice things and to come here to worship. I'm sure you probably said to a few, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I even had that question asked to me as I came in the door, and it was just fine, because I knew it was that they cared. I must admit, most people just, just think I am spiritual, and that's true in many respects. But I'm, almost hum I'm also human just like you. And every one of us has some sort of feeling bad about things or a level of depression. Eleven years ago, when I was down after being let go from interfaith ministries and then about ten days later had a heart attack that nearly took my life, And I was down looking for help when I decided to go see 
the sister at the Catholic. She's Catholic. She was on the board of, on my, of, of Interfaith Ministries. I wanted to talk to her. And after we visited for a while, we both talked about it, and I realized that she also knew what it was to be down sometimes. She said, we all are down sometimes. And then she said, I have an idea for you because it works for me. And, then, and she said, every, every morning when I wake up, my first prayer, whether I'm down or up, is thank you. She said, just keep saying every morning, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, over and over until you realize you have so much in life to be thankful for. So it's worked for me all these 10 years. But then something hit me that was hard to take. I found out that sometimes I needed more than just saying thank you. My older brother, who meant the world to me, died. A couple of weeks before he died, I went to visit him. He had a disease that was different. They hardly had a name for it. It's so seldom does it happen. But I would try to talk with him, and it was a chore. But it was also lovely. I would ask him, David, do you remember when we together went to the Netherlands and visited our family there? And there's a silence. And he's, he's smiling, and he's opening his mouth, but he's saying nothing for about a minute or two. And then it flows out of him. And he said, yes, I do remember. He had carried it in his mind, but he couldn't get his mouth to work on it. He said, yes, I remember. And I remember how often we rode the bicycle to see our relatives. And I asked him other questions. Each time it would take him several minutes to get the words together. And then I got a telephone call after I'd only been home a short time. Sam, I have something bad to tell you. Your brother died last night. He fell in the bathroom and he hit his head on the concrete and died. We couldn't save him. That was tough. That brother meant everything to me. He was eight years older than me. He was kind of like a dad and a brother. He did our wedding. He, he baptized all our children. He wrote many, many books in prayer. I knew I would miss him. But I kept saying thank you over and over again and finding many words that said how thankful I was for so many things in this world. And then my health began to fail me. At times I was tired, I just never wanted to get out of bed. My eyes began to see double. Cataract surgery fixed that. But the doctors decided that I also needed to have a stint put in from a heart. And then they would do another thing. They would try to fix my mitral valve. I'll tell you, I kept on going. But to be truthful, not without the help of many volunteers who kept the things going at Global Faith in Action that normally I would have done. I would get there sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon, whenever I could get the energy. 
and they put the stent in, and then I had to wait some longer. And I lost more and more energy. Either it was down or it was medical reasons, but finally the day came when I was to get the mitral valve fixed. When I first got to this, the hospital, I began to pray, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Haiti came to my mind because they have been going through a possible civil war and things were not safe for them and they were having a real big hard time and there were many people dying of starvation and yet those people from Haiti would send me messages praying for my health. Sometimes I wonder about, well, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I know those Haitian people so well. I've been there 20, for 27 years. I've been going back and forth. I knew their prayers meant much. So I took their prayers with me as I went to have that procedure done. And before the procedure, they kept putting all kinds of extra things in my, in me. I said, why are all those? They said, that's to prepare us for if the stint, for if the chip that they're going to put in doesn't work, we may have to do open heart surgery. Well, I went into, sur into surgery a bit worried after learning what all I was to face. And while I was still as asleep, but possibly beginning to wake up, I'll never forget the dream that came before me. A round log showed up, and it would go around and round and round, and on the end of the two logs, a voice would speak out. On the one side, it said, you want to come with us? And on the other side, there was a voice that would say, you want to be with the living? And that kept going back and forth. And every time when they would say, do you want to be with the living? I would say, yes, I want to be with the living. I couldn't say it very loud because there was all kinds of stuff in my mouth and everywhere. But my wife, she came over me. I could just see her face then come. And she said, Sam, breathe. Please, Sam, breathe. I tried to breathe, but I couldn't breathe. They had a machine in there that they were doing my breathing for me. And then I saw my, my grandkids. I tried to say something to them, but I couldn't. I wanted them to know something that they already know. I love them deeply. The one place I can't, I can't say to you for sure that those circling dogs, those circling, um, that, that it was really a message from God. I can't say that for sure, what that dream was. But I love to come to church, and I love to do what I'm doing today, and I love to see your voices, and I do know that God wants me for as long as I'm to be here. And God knows more than I know. But I think they were saying to me, Sam, there's still something left. You have a choice. And I think for all of us here today, we have our problems. We have our pains. We have our hurt. But as long as we are around, we have something that we can do. If we have good health, we have such choices. If we don't have good health, we still have choices. We have choices to live in the light of God. You heard read today in our scripture. For God did not send Jesus into the world 
to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God leaves us free to seek him or to reject him. God has the room, he gives us the room to say yes or no. I have chosen to say yes for as long as God can give me the health. And today I feel 100% better than I did two months ago. God is with me. God is with you as we worship together and as we sing together. So let's us sing together right now. Your love, O oh God, has called us. For God's love is as broad and wide, and God's love is with us today. Thanks for watching this video from the First Church of the Brethren in Wichita, Kansas. If you'd like to watch another video, click the link on the right. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing on this video. And we'd love to have you join us on Sundays at 9.30 for Sunday school and 10.45 for worship. Everyone is welcome and you're invited.